schemas are the newest aspect of security in SQL Server 2005, and they may be a little tricky to get your head around when you first look at them, but just stay with it. They're actually a great idea, and the best way to understand these things is to see them as a namespace for objects. Now think about this. In the past, in previous versions, if you were here before SQL 2005, let me make this a little easier for you. If you remember, we could refer to any object when we wrote Transact SQL queries. We could we, we could always say, for example, select everything from the authors table, and that was the object. So it would be select everything from authors. But if we wanted to connect to the, the authors table on a different server or in a different database and so forth, we could use four-part naming. So we could say select everything from put the name of the server dot database dot owner dot object. Well, as it turns out, owner right here was actually a namespace for it because all of the objects were basically collected or house kept, if you will, by SQL Server based on who owned them. So the owners of the object are how the objects were categorized and maintained in the old SQL Server. Well, in the new SQL Server, SQL 2005, that has now been changed. Notice the subtle difference here. We now refer to them as server.database.schema.object. So now, a particular table is a part of a particular schema, not just simply based on the fact that it is owned by a certain person. This created certain problems that I'll talk about in just a few minutes. Now, in previous versions of SQL Server, object namespace was determined by ownership. Now it's determined by schema. Now what's the big benefit with separating ownership and schema like that? Well, let's talk about them. Number one, objects can be groups regardless of ownership, which means I can have four different tables that are technically owned by four different people, four different administrators created them, but yet they can all be part of a similar schema and I can apply permissions across that schema to all four of those tables at once. In the past, every time you changed ownerships, permissions had to be satisfied and permissions had to be checked. And we had things called broken ownership chains, if you remember those, and they were an absolute pain to deal with. You don't have those anymore. Also, I mentioned it just a second ago, permissions can now be granted at a schema level. If I create a schema, and then create seven or eight tables in that schema, then I don't have to go to each one of those tables and apply permissions. I can simply apply permissions at the schema level. It makes management much simpler. The more simple security gets, the more efficient and the more secure security gets. Now, the third reason. Dropping users does not require renaming of all owned objects. Let's say Frank owns 27 tables. We catch up with what Frank's been doing. We fire Frank, and guess what? We've got to go rename all those tables, okay, because Frank's the owner of them, and Frank's no longer going to be a valid user in our database. So this takes care of that. Separating ownership from these objects greatly enhances our ability to manage them and secure them. So in an upcoming video, I'm going to take a look at managing schemas, and you'll see how to create these and refer to them. And that should really clear it up, and that's coming up in the next video.